Deep Track, Artist and Creative Technologist. I blend code and art, bringing projects to life with tools like lasers, CNC machines, pen plotters and more. I open source everything I make. These videos document my creative projects and share insights from behind the scenes in my tiny house studio, at exhibitions or on the road with my renovated tiny electric car. It's finally happening in Europe. This year the open source hardware summit was going to happen in Edinburgh. So I booked a flight, hopped on the plane and flew to the lovely little island that is UK. At the first day I'm usually a bit disoriented because of the inverted traffic, but nevertheless I made it to the lovely Nucleus building of Edinburgh University and was able to queue for a goodie bag. Um, the fabric badge it was such a cool idea. It felt super unique and I also had to chuckle a bit as a person who is also very into craft that now all the very nerdy electronics people have to grab a needle and sew on some elements. And otherwise the goodie bag was really exciting. My very personal favorites were the framework screwdriver and a big, big chunk of chocolate. So the first day was mainly for talks and we all gathered in this lovely lecture hall with very fluffy seats. I'm kind of jealous and my university only has like very hard wooden seats. And you could uh, grab a little snack and listen to super interesting talks. And they are all recorded and online. I will link them below the video. And if you only have a chance to watch one talk, so my personal recommendation would be the Mothbox talk from Andy Quitmeyer. He not only delivers it in such an interesting and funny way, the project is also such a great idea and very inspiring. I don't really want to spoil it but it's about a camera that can detect and count insects and that can be used as diversity meter. So if that sounds interesting to you, hop into the playlist and go watch all of these fabulous talks. And besides the talks, there were also a lot of booths where people were presenting their open source hardware projects. For example, some friends of mine brought their video mixer projects VM1 and while setting it all up, they realized, oh man, we need urgently a USB-C keyboard to set up one of our little PCs. But luckily on the booth next to them was Arturo and Solar Party who has a fabulous little keyboard with him. And also this cool project, which I think is a Linux handheld and obviously Doom. it runs Doom. There's Doom? Yeah. So I strolled down the aisle and ended up at a table that had lots of awesome knitting projects and I had a little chat with the lady standing there. And as it turns out, all these knitting projects are inspired by cellular automata and arranged in a way to represent the traditional knitting style or knitting patterns. What a fabulous project. And also here we are at Andy's Mothbox. I hope you've already seen the talk by now. If not, definitely go watch it. It's, it's fabulous. And then there was also this table with illuminated snowflake shapes and that immediately triggered my interest because maybe you remember I also made a generative system that created snowflake shapes called frozen system and I had a very very fun chat with the person creating these shapes because we both found out that we had a very long stare at actual photographs of snowflakes and then like deriving our own style from that and just from the sound you could hear that somewhere in the room must be a split flap display open flap it's amazing. This guy put so much effort into open sourcing this whole project. An interesting detail that I spotted was that some of the flaps were 3D printed and others were PCBs. And what he told me is that he has the possibility to generate both with, with his generators. So for some people it's maybe easier to just 3D print them and for others it's maybe better to just like order them as PCBs. Well, and then of course you grab some food and have some nice chats with other people. And then suddenly someone pulls out this little mushroom thing that is 3D printed with conductive filament on the black parts. And you can use it as a MIDI controller and just play music on this little shroom. I think you can even do chords, right? I think so, yeah. Or well, maybe it depends on the sound. And it's... not only that, he also had this roly-poly. And if you pet this little thingy, oh. <laughs> it acts as a keyboard and just posts a hard smiley and that was maybe the cutest thing of the day. 
And after a very cool, very long first day, you get a bit tired, like this little robot. And I booked myself a capsule in a capsule hotel hostel thing. And it had very nice hacker-friendly LED lighting. <laughs> and I have to say that was maybe one of the coziest capsules I was in so far. So waking up in the next morning felt really nice and they had a nice view and was fresh to start into the second day that was mainly reserved for doing workshops. But I came a bit early before my first workshop and had time to sew the electronic parts onto my fabric batch. That took a bit of time and that actually for me was the first time using conductive thread and it has a very interesting texture if you touch it because it's fuzzy and sturdy at the same time in a way. So my goal was flashing circuit python onto the ESP board but I somehow failed <laughs> and then ran out of time because I had to jump into my first workshop and that was a workshop about pottery and clay handled by Ellie Katz. You might know them from lots of cool projects around social media and I was extra excited to meet them again. We briefly met at EMF camp last year, so it was very cool to meet up again. They brought their own tools that they created via 3D printing. That was very interesting to see. We also had the chance to handle a bit of clay and got some demonstrations on how different wedging techniques work, for example. But I think the most interesting part, at least for me, because I already do a bit of pottery and sometimes throw some stuff on the wheel, is how Ellie is incorporating slab techniques into their building process. And I don't want to go into full detail here because Ellie has their own amazing video on this whole workflow on their own YouTube channel. So go check that out. But look how stunning these mugs and vases came out. I love them. Well then, and on the second half of the day, I was in a separate workshop, which was held by a bow. And we learned techniques on how we can make dye sensitized solar cells at home. And I have to say maybe, I wouldn't be able to fully recreate it at home, but the whole process was amazing. So first we got some information on the structure of a solar cell and we had some looks at solar cells he had already created and then we could try it on our own. So Abau had some glass plates with, I think, titanium oxide prepared for us. And the next step is to dye them. And we tried different natural dyes. So for example, we put some berry mush on, on some cells or we dipped them in solutions that contained wood chips or different other natural materials that would in the end result in a dye. And Abau told us that you can buy all the chemicals and materials needed. So this is not a problem, but often you would need to bulk buy them or they are a bit expensive. And well, after a bit of time, we could take out our cells and assemble them to a single cell. So it's like a glass sandwich now. And between those glasses, you need some conductive fluid. So you carefully squeeze and release the two glass plates a bit so that the fluid can reach all the edges and all, cover the whole area basically. So we had very different colors in the end. It was very fun to, to see how all the different solar cells turned out in the end. And then we could put them in a little device that Abau brought for every one of us, which is basically a very, very sensitive sonification circuit, I'd say. So you can plug in some earphones and when there's a tiny bit of power, you can hear a very, very slight crackling noise. And what should I say? It worked. So well, it was extremely inspiring and a very fun, sometimes kind of dirty thing to make your own dye sensitized solar cell, but very worth it. I had a lot of fun doing that. Well, and that's what two amazing days of Open Hardware Summit looked for me. I had such a great time. Thank you so much, Open Hardware Association, for having me as fellow. This is what in the end allowed me to travel to Edinburgh and participate. Thanks a lot. It was amazing. And I'm very, very much looking forward to next year's edition of this lovely event. And I hope you all guys have a great summer and we see us for the next video. Very cool. Bye bye.